What up everyone? Okay, there is a lot to talk about and oh, this is gonna be so difficult because Obi-Wan Kenobi is ended the, the limited series, I guess we'll find out if it actually stays that way, has ended and Obi-Wan Kenobi is actually my favorite Star Wars character. You know how much I love Star Wars, how much I love all of this and I'm so disappointed by this show. How did they stuff this up so badly? I don't know. Obviously, you've all probably seen so many mixed reviews of it. Some people loving the show, some people hating the show and then you've obviously seen what Lucasfilm has done and you know, I'm gonna address that first because there's a lot to get through. Hopefully, I can get through it all. Basically, what I'm gonna say, I'm not really too happy with how they've gone about the things that uh, Moses Ingram has you know experienced and faced. Obviously I don't support racism and whatever messages she has been sent it's obviously not good but I think the way it was handled by Lucasfilm was not bad. The fact that they told her prior to anything being released that you will experience racism from Star Wars fans all these kind of things it's the wording in which they use which I personally didn't like and all these kind of things because when especially the hypocrisy you see with Lucasfilm and what they've done with posters, just Disney in general I guess, what they've done with posters and marketing, all these kind of things. You can't have your cake and eat it and then, you know, say all oh, these fans are so bad when you yourselves have done all these things, you know. Alright, now that's done actually, let's just get to the show itself because there's six episodes, six too few, and let me talk about this first. Obviously I haven't really talked much about the Kenobi stuff because obviously it just came out and this is just the one video I'm doing on it, but I remember when the movie was announced and there was all this talk about the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie happening, maybe a trilogy, a lot of people are like, oh, if you get a TV show, it'll be better because you'll get longer episodes and you'll get more content from it. But this should have been a movie, in my opinion. You should have cut out, like, fact, I've got, got the episodes here. Let's see quickly. Five to eight minutes or so of, like, credits, roughly, for each episode. So I'm going to take out the credit time, roughly, uh, for each episode. So the first one's 15 minutes, roughly. Second one, 39, 38 minutes, we'll say. Third one, 42 minutes. Fourth one, 35 minutes, roughly. Fifth one... 38 minutes and the sixth one final episode probably about 48 minutes or something so not one of the episode content wise is over 15 minutes itself heck especially when this came out alongside stranger things and you have episodes for up to one and a half hours around that time itself this pales in comparison this is especially when you look at how bad episode 4 was which i'll get to eventually content wise this show sh the episode should have been really long and really detailed onto kenobi and his journey itself i personally when i remember hearing oh we're gonna get the rematch of the century between anakin and darth Vader and obi-wan i was like oh okay i'm not too sure about that i don't like the meaning again and everyone's like oh it's gonna fix potholes it's like now people are saying, oh, it makes sense why Obi-Wan refers to Darth as Darth in A New Hope. And I was like, yeah, I kind of just accepted the fact that he viewed Anakin as dead and all this kind of stuff before. I didn't need to see it. And this show doesn't fix a plot hole because there was already a 20 year gap, roughly 19, 20 years that was between the two movies. So I already had that fixed. I was like, yeah, that's plenty of time for him to accept what's happened and everything. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. We have five other episodes to go through. So... I personally didn't really hate the first two episodes, yes, I kind of like didn't really like the way it went with Obi-Wan being the way he was. I thought it should have been an um, introspective look at Obi-Wan itself, I don't even know if that's the right word, but just, you know, more of a character study as a lot of people have said of Obi-Wan, you know, studying, training with Qui-Gon, which I will say now before I forget, the cameo at the end was bad. With the canon itself, Qui-Gon couldn't become a forced ghost, and also Qui-Gon wouldn't talk like that, it took you long enough. Have you even watched The Phantom Menace? Like, that's not how Qui-Gon speaks. <laughs> so he, having him come back, you know, sure, it's fun, it's cool. He should have just been a voice because I don't think he could have completed his training to become a Force Ghost, as we've seen in the Clone Wars and everything. And we already know, despite having a story group which can, can, like keeps the canon or whatever, Lucasfilm Disney don't really care about it because they did the same problem with the Rise of Skywalker of all these Jedi voices coming back. Yeah, the chase scenes were really bad. The rooftop shootout scene, somehow Obi-Wan didn't get shot and then somehow he managed to get off the roof even though there was still a chaser with him and all this kind of stuff. Those were just really bad and you can probably see people rip it to shreds already online. But otherwise, I kind of enjoyed everything else more, more or less enough that I really didn't hate the show right off the bat. I thought it was fine because half of it was good, half of it was bad. And by good, I mean tolerable at best, because, yeah, the, the lightsaber reveal is like, why are you dressed like a Jedi, man? Don't dress like a Jedi. What are you doing? Don't look like that. Don't show off your lightsaber. How can you not reach out with your arms and reach Leia? Yeah, she was a nice surprise to be in the show itself, but it kind of just didn't make sense why Organa got... Obi-Wan to go get her when it would have made more sense for him to get, you know, a bounty hunter or someone else to go get her 
because you know she's already in the limelight it's not like we're hiding the fact that she's our daughter no she's out there she's your daughter she becomes a senator later on you're not hiding the fact that you have one so her kidnapping going public really wouldn't matter especially because i'm sure once it's revealed if someone finds out that the empire kidnapped her they would probably just put it on the rug and you know publicly wouldn't matter anyway so they're going up over to episode three and four we have that lady from game of thrones come in and uh, she was fine i'll get to her death later but yeah she was fine in an addition into it um obi-wan and leia i love their chemistry they're really good really tired of this whole you know parent and child kind of story going on but otherwise their chemistry is there leia's a great actress and obi-wan some parts he's really wooden in this show even mcgregor but other parts he really kills it so this episode these two episodes were kind of annoying they were kind of really slow and you obviously have the fight with darth vader which was so bad. Like, I know we're having Obi-Wan be really weak, especially considering within the space of, like, two days, he suddenly is able to de defeat Darth Vader. But, um, you know, having him being, wee weak, being really weak. But I have this problem with this episode and the fight later on. The camera work, cinematography is really bad. Like, I don't know, especially, like, when you say, oh, it's the rematch of the century, all these fights are going to be really cool, all this kind of jazz. And you look at the concept art, and it looks cool. But then... It has no level of like this, you know, the environment isn't there, the atmosphere isn't there, the music isn't there for like all these epic moments. Even if, you know, having Obi-Wan be lost and, you know, fearful of Vader, having him being burnt was really cool. But then having Darth Vader just let him go, even though he was supposedly not actually letting them go. It's, it's a real mess. And that's one problem I have. The writing of all that's going on is just so messy and poorly done. In episode 4, I think 90% of people shit on it because it's such a bad episode. Everything this episode did, Jedi Fallen Order did better. So yeah, if Jedi Fallen Order did it better, I don't know why this episode even tried to replicate what it did. It should have just left this episode. I guess it would have changed how episode 3 went and then you could have tied it in some way to episode 5. But the fact that they went... This is one thing I also didn't find, find hilarious. So from episode 4, they end up going back. Wade died, no one gave a shit anyway. And the CGI was really bad. There was a lot of problems with the show. But yeah, going from episode 4 to 5, when they go back to the rebel base, or I guess the pathway, whatever it's called, there was a second ship, because we find out when Darth Vader's coming, ripping a sec the second ship apart. There's a second ship that takes off and they leave in it. Why didn't you go in that second ship in the first place? Why didn't you get all those people that were waiting for you for that first ship, get them to go into that second ship, go to wherever they have to go. Not all three of those people that went to go and save, uh, pick up Leia and Obi-Wan and everything. Obviously the trench coat was shit as well. There was a lot of problems. Lightsabers, not cutting through Stormtrooper armor and that. Lol, Raven tries to interrogate a 10 year old child and fails. How am I supposed to care or like empathize or even fear this character? There's nothing going for him. But um, anyway. Yeah, so they could have gotten away. They was like, oh, we needed to get you first and then these people could escape. But you had a second ship that worked. You could have gotten away with them with that. Everything feels so small and somehow not many rebels died despite being overwhelmed by stormtroopers. That lady from Game of Thrones died. I didn't really care. Sure, it's cool, the robot leaning over her. But I didn't care enough for her. You can't have her give one line of like, oh, I joined the Empire, but it wasn't what I expected. And then I left and I, well, I did rebel stuff within it or whatever. It's not enough for me. You can't have that. It's you gotta if you want to have a character and have emotional moments, you have to have a character to get those emotional moments. I thought when Obi Wan convinced Reva to kind of you know fight Darth Vader, I thought he was gonna fight with her. But then she's not really angry at the fact that Obi Wan just left. There wasn't much of a distraction. She didn't even attack Darth Vader while he was pulling on the ship. Have him to have her attack Darth Vader, distract him long enough where the ship actually flies off. There you go. You don't have to worry about the second ship and Vader for whatever reason. Not for stopping it again. Doesn't make sense. A lot of writing contrivances in this story itself. Before I forget, Raver's backstory, the fact that it opened up with Order 66 and all that was going on with that child group of younglings and everything. I don't know why they acted like it was a big reveal that she was a youngling back then. It's just the fact that she, I, I saw she didn't get stabbed and then she hit amongst the bodies. And I see all these people talking about how she did get stabbed. And I was talking to my sister about it. I was like, we saw her, it looked like she got stabbed by Anakin. And my sister was like, oh no, maybe that's just, you know, how you get forced perspective when you see things ex experienced by other people, you think you experienced it yourself or whatever. But it really does seem like she got stabbed as a kid, somehow survived, even though by the time she would have escaped or maybe, you know, would have gotten out or, you know, maybe waited for help or whatever that happened however she got out. Obi-Wan and Yoda, from wherever they came, they came to kill all the stormtroopers and the clone troopers at the time, and then they got into the Jedi Temple, so... Within the space of however many hours or days, it wouldn't have been that many days, I believe, 
she managed to escape, heal herself and get out of there, eventually become an Inquisitor again somehow, whatever. But then the fact that Vader also knew she was a youngling back then and that she knows he's Anakin and that he left her alive. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Vader, we've seen in other canon stories, wouldn't leave someone who knows his original, like his identity alive. He kills them immediately. He killed a bunch of storm clone troopers. He killed Jocasta Nu. He killed a whole bunch of people if they know his identity. And that's a huge thing because Anakin Skywalker's dead and he doesn't want that going out that he is Anakin Skywalker, all this kind of stuff going on. And he lets her live. The uh, Grand Inquisitor is like, the revenge is a very powerful weapon to keep one alive. You giving her motivation for revenge and you're keeping her alive. You're such an idiot. <laughs> oh God, uh, that was something else. What I'm talking about now with this final ep final episode itself, a lot of people have really enjoyed it. And that's cool. If you really enjoy this rematch of the century, I think objectively you are wrong in thinking that it is a really good fight. But then you might have just enjoyed the episode itself. I will say half the episode is good. Um, good enough, better than the other episodes as well, especially with, and that's mostly focusing on the Obi-Wan Darth Vader thing, because Anakin bringing Hayden Christensen back and you have him in one flashback, and that alone is just this fight which just correlates only with that one episode itself and doesn't really add anything else to the overall, you know, relationship the two have. You bring um, Tamara Morrison back as a clone trooper, which is a great cameo, but then, you know, why not just put him in a Cody armor or put him in a Captain Rex armor? You know, you already have a live action Ahsoka, so there's no fear in getting a younger live action Ahsoka and giving us a Clone Wars flashback, something which would add more to that relationship of that brotherhood kind of relationship, more so than the master apprentice kind of relationship that we had in episode two. People will say, oh, it's fan expectations to this, fan expe expectations that. But, you know, in the marketing and everything that we have provided, you know, the fact that they have Hayden Christensen come back and he has like five minutes of screen time across every, the whole series itself. And I'm not, th like he was barely in the suit for most of the series itself. He has that one sliced face in the final fight. He has that, what, 15 seconds where he's in that Jedi robe and then a flashback. And I guess you can count the back to tank stuff, but let's be honest, that's... You could have got some other actor, put him in makeup, and that would have worked out as well. But anyway, to the final episode itself, the fight, I do think there were emotions there. Some of the lines, you know, great callbacks, some of the actions, great callbacks and everything like that. Especially like even to the previous episode, they had them on their backs to one another. And they, I think they did really similar moves to what they did in the training or something. Um, those are really nice things to see, but it was filmed so poorly. The direction, the cinematography, it, like everyone's like, you know, everyone knows for whatever reason, Disney doesn't give a budget to their Star Wars films. It's so clear. Like the fact that they're filming so many in um, desert planets or open fields or something like that, the volume makes everything look so small. The rematch of the century. We're talking about a rematch between two people that fought on a lava planet. And with George Lucas, he had the environment, the music, all these things play an important role in enhancing the visual, you know, fight that you saw. But then, what do they do here? They just have it. Okay, you know what? We need this rematch of the century in a cool location. How about we just go for like a deserty, rocket, rocky planet? at night and that's that you know that adds so much to, to the fight environmentally wise and all this kind of stuff they can throw rocks that's so cool isn't it it's not like come on the environment itself everything that was set up for that fight was poorly done it was filmed in a really poor fashion and yes there were some moments in which there were cool movements and you know combat abilities or whatever shown between the two of them but then there were other moments where they were swinging the lightsabers like bats or when Darth Vader pushed Kenobi against the wall and then they both fell out. I was like, what are you guys doing? Oh man, like the energy just wasn't there 100%. It was cool to see, you know, Hayden Christensen's face with the cutoff mask and everything. But then Rebels did it better. Like the way Obi-Wan cuts his mask off as well is so weird to see. And yeah, I knew the motion there was cool uh, and everything like that. But there was just so much wrong with the fight as well, which... You know, while there were cool parts, it was a just terrible parts. And then you have it intertwined with Reva somehow getting off um, the wounded planet she was on, getting to Tatooine, and then fighting Owen and Brulas. She should have eased, like, even though she's wounded, all she had to do was just, like, force choke one of them or force pull them down and then just kill them. And I don't get why she waited till night. You know, she's like, okay, maybe she took a long time for whatever reason to get to the, you know, homestead or whatever. But then Owen and Luke were already in the same town as well and presumably got there after Reva did. So if Reva found out his location, she should have maybe got to that place and scouted it and just watched to see what happens before she attacked. 
or she just dilly dallied until night time and then went. It doesn't really make much sense. And also Baru's like, I'm not leaving my home. Where are we going to run off to like the desert or whatever? But then what that happens in the plan itself is like once Reva gets past Owen Baru, she tells Luke to run off to the desert. <laughs> so he still ends up running off and he would have been better off just actually leaving the home. It's funny as well how Bale is like, what about your duty to the daughter? You know, Luke is not about Luke. It's not about the boy. It's all about you, all this kind of stuff. And then he gets Obi-Wan to leave Luke and then Luke ends up being in danger. And then for some reason at the end of the episode, Obi-Wan once again leaves Luke alone to go to give the droid back to Leia. And it makes no sense. And the fact that he actually, Leia actually remembers him, knows him as Obi-Wan, all this kind of stuff, it just creates more of like a plot hole I guess even though like they might have addressed I wouldn't say they're plot holes because obviously there was like I said this 19 year gap between the two movies you could have easily like been like oh, okay that's why Obi-Wan acts like this calls Raider this or acted like this or that's why Anakin has a scar on his head all these kind of things that's fine because there was this 20 year gap so when you start to address them you got to watch out for what other plot holes you create the fact that Obi-Wan let Darth Vader live even though he said I'll do what I must again like he thought he killed Anakin in episode 3, he thought he left him there to die, to burn, and he couldn't bring himself to give the final blow. Understandably so. That's why he's surprised when he finds out he's alive in this series. But then you can't have him decide, I'm gonna kill you and I've accepted that you're Darth Vader, and then just leave him to stay alive and then walk off. Like if you really wanted to, you could have had some natural calamity occur between the two. I told my sister this. Or while he's fighting Darth Vader, he senses Luke is in danger, and he has to decide between fighting Vader, trying to escape, and then trying to get to Luke, or does he finish off Vader and let Luke, whatever. And then obviously Vader would try to overpower him and it makes more sense for him to go to Luke. All that kind of stuff. You play it out, however you want to write it, write it like that. But you give it a reason for what, why it has to occur that way. You naturally make it like that instead of just writing Obi-Wan beats Darth Vader and then decides not to kill the enemy which he set out to kill at the start of the fight and everything like that and end the galaxy's war or whatever Imperial thingy and just walks off. But yeah. So then, yeah, and then it, he's like, I trust Bale, I trust um, Owen and Baru to look after Luke, but they didn't look after Luke, you know? You can't just leave Luke again at the end of the episode. It's, it's a huge mess. And yeah, overall, it's like a five out of 10 for me, the show. Some good moments there, but too many poor ones. Whoever wrote this was, uh, you know, you're a real idiot if you wrote this stuff thinking it's gonna be good. And yeah, Disney, Kathleen Kennedy, yo. You guys messed up big time. So yeah, I've probably been ranting for like 15 minutes or something like that. I don't really know. But uh, I've there's so much I would love to say about this show. Hey, I forgot. I took out these comics. Because guess what? I actually read. I actually have comics of Obi-Wan's journey and stuff like that between episode 3 and 4. And it's not, not like they had material to work with and all these kind of stuff. And he had does have his own little journey. You know, and it could have just been that character study of him with Qui-Gon. Like I already went over why Qui-Gon doesn't work the way it did and everything. But... It could have been that. It could have been like, I recognize the look that they had at the end of the show and hello there, nice fun little thing, all this kind of jazz. But, you know, I think people are freaking out and praising the show, this episode specifically, because of all these callbacks and references it has, all this fan service it does. But I don't think people are realizing that it's not fan service done. Well, at least most of it isn't. So yeah. Otherwise, those are my opinions on it, uh, on the Obi-Wan show. Let me know what you thought about it. Um, hopefully it's a little bit more positive than mine, but Either way, Disney's making money. They're obviously not putting much money into what they make, but uh, either way, they need to work on these content more. I'm excited for Andor, it looks good, uh, but you know, now I'm kind of cautiously optimistic. So thank you for watching, hit that like button, and until next time, I'll see us.